If, if you if you if you acquire the reputation that every company you, you do, you jump the gun, whatever, whatever you think, you blow the whistle, you will not never be able to find a job. You have to convince people that it exhausted all other possibilities and the problem could not be solved and you blew the whistle. Now, there is an exception, a serious exception. You are the engineer inspecting aeroplanes. Aeroplane comes in, you inspect it and you see a big crack on the wings. So you write in the report. You take it to the office and your supervisor tells you, no, 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 it's crack. But there is a crack. It's crack. Take it. Whatever. We, the plane has to go. We don't have another plane. It has to go. Change your uh, report. What do you do? You say, okay, let me go and call my wife, call my family, <laughs> and so on. What do you do? In that case, when issues of health and safety are involved, what do you do? You blow the whistle right away. Okay? Similarly, the case you mentioned about someone is stealing money from the company. In that case, you cannot, there is no way that you could uh, take a long time. You have to, of course, it's not as serious as the play, but still, it's something that you have to act relatively quickly. Okay, yes? Uh, my boss advised me that you cannot take your problems of the job at home and the problems at home to the job. Correct. Right. What about there? Is this advice correct or not? What? I didn't say it's correct. It's not correct. You want to be able to discuss with someone and think coolly outside. But well, it's not that problem. What? It's not that problem. Why are you? It's, it's not that problem, problem. But, 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 but you have a family depending also on your salary. If you lose your job, they will be affected. They are stakeholders in your job. Therefore, you should talk to them. Second, you want someone who cares about you, cares about your job, right? And at the same time, have some distance and can can help you think about it. Just by talking to them, it can help you think about it. Don't, the, the, the danger is that you are called within the company, called company within the company, and do some actions, to make, which may be yeah. rash actions, which means that not the proper actions. You need to cool off. You need some cool off period to think. And you need someone to bounce back what are the options, the possibilities. Okay? Yeah. Yes? I want to go to message. Yes. On my SMS. Yes. Uh, blowing a whistle. For yes. Uh, explaining the whole situation. Yes. And I tried to call back, send a message, and there was no response. But what do you think about this reaction? Is it a good way? I mean, I don't know who it was from the company, but she found, she, I think, I say she because I have an imagination who it was, to talk me in this way. What happened? Group by Anonymous SMS. Anonymous SMS. Yes. It was, uh, I, I found this, it. It's another option. Doesn't mean because you talk to your family, you are, you are not going to do anything they tell you don't. But you may think, oh, wait, wait, you may maybe suggest you have to do something, but do it anonymous. <coughs> or find somebody else who can do it. Or, you know, you, you have to think, you know. Okay? Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you before we go to the theories is the, let's see if I can, can get it quickly. Uh, so, let's see. Okay, the, the, the last thing I want you to on the, of these issues before the theories is the, ah, uh, here it is. Yeah. Special fiduciary responsibilities. I told you that we have to talk about this because certain professions have special, we have special fiduciary responsibilities. Fiduciary comes from the word fite, the Latin word which means business, faith, trust. Okay? Special obligations of certain professions to customers. These professions depend only on trust. If trust, all professions, of course, and everything depends on trust, but these professions that we mentioned now do not exist without trust. The others may exist without trust. They will not be doing very well, but they will still exist 
the two exist. This is prohibited by the version now, the one exists without files. The one is bankers. Why bankers? Why is banking a fiduciary job? Why? It's not your, your assets. It's, it's not your money, it's not your assets. People are trusting you with their money, with, your, with the fruits of their labor. Accountants. The same. The same. The same. Somebody uh, trusts you your money. Well, yes, but yeah, account your, his money. <laughs> accountants. What do you trust? What account does give you that you have to trust? Information. Why don't you bring inside information of your financial Okay, that too. But as a customer. True and fair picture. Huh? True, true and fair picture. I depend, if I buy shares, I depend on the account that's report, on the auditor's report. It's a different thing. Huh? It's a different thing. Yes. It's one thing to be an account, it's another thing to be an auditor. Okay, and I have the auditors too. That's the first. Okay. But accountants, I include accountants slash auditors. Okay? Okay, so you're right. One thing to be an accountant, another to be an auditor. As an accountant, I have to trust you to give you all the confidential information to prepare the report, and I have to trust your report. As, as, as a CEO of the company, right? Now, auditors, as a customer, as a, st as a shareholder, okay, as an investor, I look at the financial reports from the auditors to know how the company is doing. If they cook the data, if, if, if the accountants they cook the data, or the auditors did not do a proper job in auditing the accounts, I may invest in a company who is likely to go bankrupt or likely to uh, lose money and the share, uh, share price to fall. So, error, for example. So, this. Uh, these jobs, nobody will hire an accountant whom he cannot trust. Nobody will believe the reports of an auditor that he cannot trust. The, so, the if you are an untrusted auditor, you are finished. You are not even an auditor. Yeah. Auditor's report should represent a true and fair value yeah. of the right. subject. Right. Right. The same as accountant. This is a... Okay, what about lawyers? You, would you go to a lawyer who, whom you don't trust and tell him that you committed a murder and you want him to defend you? <laughs> you, would, you would you? Would a, would a lawyer... Okay. Let's, let's take another one. Doctors. I come back to that. Doctors. You have to trust them, okay? Now, priest. If you if you don't trust them, you are not going to confess your sins. If you confess their sins to the priest, and you know you are afraid that the first thing they do, they call your wife and tell you tell her all the all the sins you made with other women. Okay. Why this? These jobs have one characteristic that is called asymmetry of information. What means asymmetry of information? Ali. Yes. Sorry. And now I know your name. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yes. Uh, one part knows more information than the other. Right. To one party to a transaction knows a lot more than the other. And this has started with Used car sales. <laughs> you know the expression, can you trust this person? Can you buy a car from this person? Can you buy a used car from this person? Used car salesman is the... It's, it's considered the personification of, of uh, untrustworthy people. How did it come this about? Because when you used to, when you go buy a car, a used car, you know nothing about the used car. How many accidents it has been, if it changed, it changed the engine, if it has problems, you don't know. You have to trust the salesperson. But the used car salesman will tell you that it's great, it's in great shape, and they will, you ask how much, and they tell you 10,000 euros. But you know nothing about the car. 
and you are suspecting that they're selling you a lemon, right? And you are going to, after you buy it, you will start have problems and so on. So, what do you do? You say, no, I would not pay 10,000. Probably it's a lemon. I pay you 8,000. Of course, the salesperson knows that you are thinking this way. So the best car he has, the best cars, used cars, he's not going to put them in the market. What he's going to do with them? The best car he He's going to sell them to people he knows and know it and trust him. So he can get a good price. But of course, you know that he's doing this. <laughs> Therefore, what do you do? You are not going to offer him 8,000. You offer him 6,000. Because you know that he's doing But of course... Yes, but he knows that and he also... He, oh, he knows that and even the... The, the, the lowest price is still the second, the second category of used cars, uh, in, uh, also he doesn't put it in but you know that, you don't offer it, and so on and so forth, up to the point in which the market collapses. Right? This is called adverse selection. And then the only cars in the market, or who go to buy a used car, is le are lemons. And nobody wants to buy a lemon. So when you go to used car yards, you see lots of used cars. And what do they do at the end? They put them in a, uh, in a bidding, in an auction. Okay, so this is called you is called the theory of the lemons, and someone got the Nobel Prize for it. I get low got the Nobel Prize for the theory of the lemons. This adverse selection, which says if there is a symmetry of information between buyer and seller, then the result is adverse selection that results in the collapse of the market. So, but this profession, no, this profession have the same asymmetry. Tell me about the asymmetry of vision. Who knows more? Who knows more? Let's take the case of the, of the lawyer. Who knows more? The lawyer or the client? The client. The lawyer, something like the lawyer, some the client. I say the lawyer. Say the lawyer. You say the client. Why the lawyer? Because he knows his client. The client doesn't know. Huh? The lawyer knows his client and everything yeah. what he has done and what he's fighting for. No, no. I just go to the lawyer now, he doesn't know me yet. Huh? I go, so there is asymmetry information. Who knows more? The client. The client. The reputation. But you can hide information from your lawyer anyway. Okay. <coughs> Who know? Let's go to the doctor. Who knows more? The patient or the doctor? The patient. Huh? He knows the problem. The patient knows his problem. I feel uh, the pain in my back, for example. <laughs> The doctor then will make assumptions. Okay, the answer is both. Oh. <laughs> in the case of the lawyer, of course the client knows more what he did, they knows what he did. The lawyer doesn't yet know. So he has to trust the client to tell him the truth, right? But the lawyer knows a lot more about the law, about previous cases he can use to defend him, and so on. The client has to trust the lawyer that he will use all his knowledge, all his effort to get him free or to get him the lightest sentence. Same thing with the doctor, right? When you go to a doctor, he doesn't immediately examine you. What he tells you, sit down and ask you to tell him. Let's say you never been before the doctor. He has to ask you, what do you do? What is your uh, job? Or how do you feel? When do you feel the pain? Uh, what did you eat yesterday? What did you do? He asks you all kinds of questions, right? He has to trust you that you tell him the truth. Otherwise, he cannot make so correct diagnosis. So, he has to trust you. You know everything and he knows nothing. It's the first time he sees you. Uh, but the patient knows very little about medicine about treatment, about diagnosis. The doctor knows all that. He has all that experience. So the patient, the patient has to trust him. That he's going to use all his knowledge, right? Yeah. And uh, so this is called, in these cases, we call 
we call it there is reciprocal, reciprocal uh, um, asymmetry of information. Reciprocal means there is in both sides. For some things is the one, for some other things is the other. Okay? While in the case of the used car sales, salesman was, what's it called? A unilateral. It was a unilateral um, asymmetry of information. Simply, the, the, the used car salesman knows a lot and the, and the, the customer very little. It's one way. In the case of the doctor, the case of the lawyer, the case of the banker, the case of the accountant is unilateral. In the case of the priest, bilateral. Bilateral, sorry. Bilateral or reciprocal. In the case of the priest, it's interesting. In the case of the priest, again, it's bilateral. It's why? The priest doesn't know all your sins. You know the sins, okay? And the trust, the sins you did, and the priest has to trust you. That you tell him. I'm talking about the confession. He trusts you that you tell him that the sins you did. Okay? But in terms of who, know, who knows the God's, God's will, who knows how to forgive sins, and so on, who has a direct line with God? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you a little story. There, is, oh, there are two friends, two called Lidi. And the one says to the other, friend, are you a good friend? He says, yes, I'm a good friend. Anything I tell you will do? I will do it for a good friend like you, I will. Okay, he says to him, I want you to go to the priest and confess your sins. What, ki what kind of request is that? <laughs> did you say you are going to do everything I asked you? I did, but this is very unreasonable. I haven't been to confess my sins since I was in elementary school and the teacher forced us to go and do it. Just please do it for me. The guy says, I will do it for you, but you have to tell me why. I don't understand why you want to. Okay, he says, if, if, since you insist, I will tell you. You know, he says to him, I fancy the priest's wife. I like her. She's, you know, you don't know her, but I know her, and she's. <coughs> She's cute. And I like her and she likes her. But the priest, her heart, is very violent. If she finds us together, he'll kill us. He's papa for us. He will kill us. So I want you to go and confess your sins while I go out with his wife. So, so the guy says, okay, okay. Since, since, you are asking me to do it as a friend, I will do it for you. Ah, but the guy says to him, but, but, but you understand, he tells him that I don't have too many sins to confess. He says to him, ah, oh, you have to, the, the confession has to last for two hours. Uh, give us some time, I mean, like, come on. Uh, how can I do that? Well, tell him, make the short story long. So every one of you has said you tell him, make an introduction, it's all good all. Okay, uh, what if I run out of stories? If you run out of stories, out of scenes, just make up some. Okay, okay, so two hours, huh? Okay. So he goes, so he starts saying his sins to the priest, and the priest said, uh, okay, okay, he hear, hear him say his, his, he, he makes a sto short story long and so on. So at one point, he runs out of stories. So the priest say, have we finished? So I say the prayer. Mm, he says, not really. Mm. Uh, there are some more things to tell you and so on. So he thinks, he, he imagines some stories and he starts telling him stories and so on. So he thought of three, four things. Then he, he ran out again of stories. Look at his watch and what he sees. There is another half hour still to go. It's only one and a half hour. What to do, what to do? The priest is anxious to finish. Say, have we finished, have we finished? He says, no, not really. You know, there is something more. What is it? Tell me, what is it? Uh, what I tell you, priest, you know, um, actually I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, committing a sin right now. What sin you commit right now? You are here. You are confessed, how you can copy the sin? 
you know, please sit there, you know, Father, you know, I'm here, you know why I'm here, I'm here to have it from my friend, to give you time, so, because he can't see, he can't see your wife, I don't know how to tell you, he can't see your wife, and I'm here to keep you, to keep you busy, so that he goes out with your wife, the priest says to him, my child says, Yeah. Are you married? Are you married? He said, yes. Well, run fast home because my wife died two years ago. <laughs> you got it. You got it, huh? Okay, so we, we are going to have a break. Uh, and we come, we come back, <coughs> okay? Ah, one, one thing before I tell Now, how these professions solve the problem of the asymmetry of information? How they establish trust between people who don't have the same information? Because these jobs don't exist without trust. They do that through the code of ethics. They We talk about code of ethics. Based in accountants, the accountants have a code of ethics. You know that. The auditors, the bankers, the doctors. Who make the code of ethics for doctors? Hippocrates started it. Right? Shall do no harm, etc., etc. All these jobs have code of conduct, co professional code of ethics. We are going to see those after we see the theories. But every one of us, every business, every organization, including the public service, should have a code of ethics. And that code of ethics, code of conduct, is a management tool. It also, should also be, should become part of the culture of the organization, part of the DNA of the organization. We talk about it. Because without it, trust is lost. And when trust is lost, performance is lost, profits are lost, share value falls. So it is important to maintain trust, not only in these professions, but in all professions, by through the code of conduct. But for these professions here, the code of conduct is a sine qua non. Without it, nothing. So it's an absolute requirement for these jobs to have, that's the reason, for example, the doctors, are not supposed to be advertised, right? The lawyers and so on, they have a strict code of ethics. Any question? Okay, take a 15 minute break. Yes.